the show this week it's playoff time in kentucky and the rockets are going to go up and uh, play the best first coach right. you got to get started so uh we're going to break down uh this week's uh, matchup talk a little bit about last week's uh, season ending win on senior night and uh, get you ready for uh playoff action on the show here today presented by whitetail properties in partnership with uh, par four plastics makers of gun stocks and car parts and Laundry baskets, all kinds of great things out there. Deer Lakes Golf Course, uh, pro out there is Ricky Hughes. Colonel Ag, harvest season's over, but uh, it's maintenance time now, so contact them to do your maintenance. Farmers Bank and Trust on the same street corner since 1899, and the Chamber of Commerce Partner Year of the Year won a big award uh, Saturday night. Your wife was there at the event. Yeah. H and H Home and Hardware, uh, they were they won an award too, Business of the Year, Milwaukee and a steel dealer down there. I had my saw worked on this week. They got to have a special on uh, steel saws. You can get a, uh, uh, all your uh, service work done. Yeah. yeah, you might check that out. Johnson's Furniture and Appliance uh, Sales and Service, a GE and other products. KB Pharmacy, Mike Keller and Bradley Boone. USA Mortgage, Derek Myers. Uh, interest rates are, are coming down now. You might check with him uh, on when you go to buy your home. C Plant Federal Credit Union. C Plant is for everyone. Attorneys in Marion, Bart Frazier and Kobe Evans. Riley Tool and Machine, Voice of the Rockets, Todd Riley. Mulligan's Pizzeria and Pub, of course, under new ownership. Uh, former Crittenden County uh, Rocket, Jansen James. YTG Insurance. Auto Home and other lines of insurance, Hodge Sport, Hodges Sports and Apparel, of course, deer season to get your hunting license down there and all your gear. And Serena Dickerson at Full Body Fitness. Uh, Coach Courtney's here. We've, uh, gosh, we've, end of the year, we've run out of uh, people who want to come talk, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know, everybody feels like they've had all they can say. So, uh, big week this week, no, no less. Uh, we'll start off talking a little bit about uh, last week. Uh, and uh, senior night, big send off, great game. Uh, talk about your players of the game there. Uh, start, uh, I mean, just what a game. A lot of guys got in, a lot of new guys kind of contributed to different places. And just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's kind of hard looking back because it's been a while now. It seems like it <laughs> just think about OCAS so much. But um, yeah, it was a good night for us, what you want senior night to be. Um, just like you said, a lot of guys, especially seniors, getting to have opportunities, playing a lot more, some of them, than, than they normally get to. Just feel like that they earn that that right. And it's kind of their night um, to go out there and shine. And they did a good job doing that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Players of the game, I think offensively, was Quinn and uh, Caden, mm -hmm. Cole. Um, I, I don't know the stats, but they, they pretty well lit it up. Both of them played extremely well. I'll um, chime in on that okay. after you get through with your list. Yeah. There. And then um, the defensive player of the game was, was Landon Curry, which is a guy that's been getting some time, but yeah. nothing like that he got, um, which some of it was due to um, being senior night and some of it was due to Mankey was out, mm -hmm. um, which, which is kind of who he's behind, and he played outstanding. Sure 13 did. tackles, something like that, a tackle for loss or two. I don't know exactly. You can hit up those, but played extremely well. Did a, did a lot with his opportunities, and I think earned the right to play a lot more um, however long, much longer the season goes if he continues to play like that. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to see him step up and a senior to, to get that on senior night. Um, lineman of the week was Caden Travis. Did well on the offensive line, but defensive line, he made a big impact. Yeah. A lot of tackles for loss in the backfield all night. Thought he did a really good job taking care of his job. So another senior that, that, that made the list. And then special teams, we didn't have one, right? That's correct. Yeah, yes, yeah. there wasn't a whole lot that just wasn't a whole lot that went on in special teams. Not nothing too bad, but nothing too great. Either. You know, you talk about Caden Travis. He's a guy. You know, he doesn't play offense, so his name's not no, in the headlines. Well, he plays offensive line. Well, play, yeah, yeah but yeah. I mean, he's not a guy. Right. Get the ball and things. You don't hear about him a lot. But he's a, he's a lunch pail guy. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he he's been getting it done for a long time. Yeah. yeah, really important to what we do. A guy, whenever this season ends, that we'll really miss, and mm -hmm. we've really counted on him, uh, especially defensively, but offensively too. I don't know. It's probably three years that I don't know if he started that whole time, mm -hmm. but played for a long time. So. 
you know, uh, Landon Curry, and he's a senior. He's got came came out to football late, mm-hmm. and here, you know, right here at the end of his senior year, and now he's kind of figuring it out a little bit. Yeah. Fifteen tackles yeah. last week. Was that what it was? Fifteen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He played great. Played outstanding. Um, just good to see. He's a guy that brings the energy every day to practice, and is always on the scout team, going hard. And just you know, when things aren't going your way, somebody that continues to push forward mm-hmm. and get positive results. Um, you know, I think it's a testimony to to him and his work ethic and his attitude. Being easy, I think there was a time which you'd have to confirm it with him where I was think that he was thinking about not playing or, or maybe hanging it up or quitting or something like that. But I think obviously it shows if you just keep pushing forward what you can get out of it and the results that he had. So just mm-hmm. happy for him. Of course, uh, your offensive players of the game, those are guys we talk about all the time. We'll mm-hmm. start with Quinn, uh, 28 for 35, had, had one interception uh, for 351 yards. Uh, it's the first time he's ever thrown for over 300 yards mm-hmm. in a game. Uh, and he's boy, he's a guy that uh, next year we, we, he's going to be a, a guy to look for. Maybe being in that we talk about all the time the gridiron glory top ten yeah, guys. Yeah, and right. He, he's got he's got to get some uh, consideration there. Yeah, I would think so. We have a really good quarterback class in West Kentucky with the Jack James from Tillman, mm-hmm. uh, Madisonville's quarterback, um, the Gregory kid from Grays. They're all seniors though. Um, I don't think that there's a better quarterback. And I biased to Quinn even with this group. But next year coming back, I, I think he's probably the best quarterback in West Kentucky that you're going, that's coming yeah. back. You know, I'm not saying that someone can't jump him or whatever, but just preseason wise to me, yeah. I don't see another better quarterback that's coming back in West Kentucky. You know, uh, over at Caldwell County week before last, uh, talking to Coach Gates, he was he had his chair over on our sideline. No, see, that's where he was sitting. He had, had hip surgery. Okay. So uh, he had to sit in a chair, but uh, I walked by and he hollered at me. He said, who, who is that Summers boy? He's, he's a good quarterback. Yeah. And uh, he said, he's not Aaron's boy, is he? I said, yeah, he is. Well, Aaron played for me, you know, when he okay. was a freshman. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he, he really t- was talking highly uh, yeah. of Quinn. So were the guys on the chain gang over there. Yeah, he's, he's good. Just, he's really good. Yeah, he's a good player. And another good player is Caden Hired, uh, your your nephew. Uh, you know, he's, he's assaulting the record book this year. Yeah. Broke another record with touchdown uh, receptions last weekend, uh, last Friday. And, of course, he had six catches for 142 yards. Man, when a receiver, and he's had several games over 100 yards, and that's a lot for a receiver. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's really good, obviously. Um, he, he makes a lot of plays, can do a lot of things well. Um, but also, I think all of it, like the records and all those things, and I think that he would take – it's it's a perfect storm of yeah. – yeah, he's had, played with Micah, he's played with Quinn. Uh, we've played an offense that really like to sling it around. You know, it's a group thing. Mm-hmm. Coach Barry likes to throw it. We trust him a lot. So mm-hmm. we, Coach Barry's going to dial up things to him and things like that. So it's a group effort. Anytime you get a record, there's no – at least in football, there's no single records – um, he's a, he's earned it, and I'm not taking anything away from him. But I think he'll be the first to tell you that it's all a group thing. He is, and he hurts as bad when we lose. Yeah. No matter – you know, I, I had to talk him into uh, a week or two before that when he, when he broke the uh, – the uh, reception, career reception uh, yeah. record, and I had to just talk him into uh, coming on the post game yeah. interview. Yeah. You know, he just was hurt. Yeah. You know, uh, all these guys are. They take it so seriously, and they they care about their teammates and their fans, and they want to do well for them. And uh, just a couple of games this this year didn't go our way that we thought might have. We were mm-hmm. in, you know, two district games. Yeah. And uh, things can turn on a dime. On yeah. You. And now here we go back to Owensboro <laughs> yeah. because of it. That's so. Right. Sure. And, uh, you know, Owensboro, we'll, we'll kind of get into them. Uh, they are uh, obviously uh, the number one team in Class 2A. And it depends on whose poll you look at in the top ten, all classes in the state, they're, mm-hmm. they're somewhere in, in most of the top, the top tens, ten, yeah. usually somewhere around nine right uh-huh. now. Uh, some great football teams uh, in Kentucky. And, and, you know, when you're up there, of course, they're, they're undefeated. Two now, two regular seasons in a row. Right. Uh, got to the play uh, championship game last year, the playoffs uh, against Mayfield, and lost uh, up there at, at Kroger in that game. Uh, you know, just looking down through, let's kind of go through uh, the playoffs, and we'll just kind of talk about some of these games to get your you know feelings on them. Mm-hmm. Todd Central will be at Mayfield, Edmonds County at Murray, Kawa at Fort Campbell. Of course, we're at uh, Ocat. Todd Central, Mayfield, uh, not much say there. I think Mayfield uh-huh. wipes it, that one out. 
Yeah, no disrespect. I mean, that's no, just a tough, yeah, they're just, just a very tough match yeah. for anybody. Yeah, yeah. About, about like ours. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, Edmondson County at Murray. I don't know much about Edmondson County. Do you? Well, I know a little bit about them. I, I would, and I'm a little bit biased to our district too, mm-hmm. but I, I feel that our district's really tough and battle tested. I, I don't know what Murray is. They're a top five team in most things in they're two out of the state, so I would expect them for them to roll in that one. Yeah, you know, we've really got squad. Of course, we were up there in the top ten at one time, and at that point, three teams and three of the four teams in our district yep. were in the top ten, and we've fallen out now after falling on some hard times. So now Mayfield's uh, four, and Murray is five yeah. behind Ocath, Beachwood, and Lexington Christian. Uh, so the other game uh, over in this region will be Caldwell County at Fort Campbell. I mean, once they get on the base and get right. the game going, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know that could that could be a you know Fort Campbell beat Madisonville. Right. They've shown some signs. Yeah, I've watched them because I thought that it could be a team that we could see. They're really athletic. Got a quarterback that can run, a receiver that can run, a quarterback, and any given night that can be a really tough matchup. With that being said, I think Caldwell can definitely win that football game mm-hmm. as a thirty-two seed. Um, Caldwell, I think, got better throughout the year, playing with a lot of confidence, got us, and really got Trig um, pretty good last week. And then I think they're on a high. I, I would, if I had to pick, I would pick Caldwell. Yeah. But they will have to contain the speed of Fort Campbell, which, uh, like you said, they beat Madisonville, which Madisonville was a really solid five eight team. So, not saying that game could go either way. Yeah, uh, I thought against us, you know, I really didn't expect Caldwell to play as hard as they did, you know, after they'd had a couple of seasons in a row. It's been tough. Mm-hmm. Of course, when they get up for us, for sure. But I tell you, that, I thought they hit hard. They yeah. played They played hard. And yeah, they're they good play team. like that, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and to good. Fort Campbell, too, and that, that coach did an outstanding job. That was a team that really struggled and, and – about two years ago, and when he took over last year, got some wins and got things going, and they are at absolute, you know, 180 turn of where they were. Really, really improved football team. Mm. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come right back and uh, take a little closer look at uh, OCATH as if we haven't seen them enough lately. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute. All right, we're back, and we're going to uh, take a closer look here at OCATH, a team that, you know, uh, really until the last couple of years, we didn't see them until the playoffs. Mm-hmm. We uh, we were 0-12 uh, against them uh, lifetime, <laughs> uh, and we lost – the last time we were in Class 2A, we lost to them in 2012, 13, and 14. Up there, ended our season, first game of the playoffs. Coach Starnes was here, uh, and – you know, it was always just miserable. They they just they, they put it on us. We weren't we weren't we weren't you know in in the same league with mm-hmm. them. Uh, and all of them just lopsided. And so I mean, we're we are coming into this game obviously uh, the decided underdog. Oh yeah. And uh, you know how do you how do you keep your team focused when when uh, and how do you manage the expectations uh, of your players and, and 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 the fans for that matter i mean how do you go into that game yeah i don't know if i manage expectations we want to win that's what we're talking it's yeah. win i mean nothing else really matters that at this point especially it's a this is it so we're saying to win the game um, to shock the world mm-hmm. now we understand how tough that's going to be that's what we got to understand mm-hmm. Um, we can look at the successes and things. We did have some success up there at times at OCATH. we got to look at those things. Why did things go well? Why did things go bad? And understand, man, they would start – this team, when they start rolling and start tempoing you, and, man, when one thing happens, it's like a tornado. we got to be able to weather that storm and, and be able to punch back when things go bad. So that's what we've been talking about. Um, I think our guys know. They've seen it, you know, how good they are and how, mm-hmm. how quick things can go sideways with that good of a football team. So – 
having the mental toughness to, to be able to play a full game versus a team like that, that, that that's that good and that explosive on both sides of the ball, um, it's tough. It's, it's, it's really, really tough. So, But like I said, we've, we've played them, so you have some sort of measuring stick of what you could do. And we did have some successes. We just have to – we're trying to multiply those successes and, and to, get, mm-hmm. you know, to build off of those. You know, you mentioned their tempo. It's, it was like when they crossed the 50-yard line – they started speeding the game up yeah. on you. It's like they it's like they smell blood in the water. Yeah. And and it, the other side of the fifty, they, they didn't tend to do that yeah. as much. Yeah. They do a, do a good job with their tempo. And, and mixing it up. It's one thing to play a tempo team, it's another thing to play a team that goes slow to fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then and out of nowhere. So they do a really good job with their tempo and really start any team that tempos you really handcuffs what you can do to them because yeah. you've got to be there fast. So you, everything that you're trying to gain an advantage with is hard to do versus tempo. You've got to be on your toes as a coach and all your personnel have got to be sideline right. right there ready when you're, when you're yeah. changing personnel yeah. and, and you can't be yelling down the sideline looking for somebody. Right. Yeah. Things that, that can get in the way. So, yeah, uh, you mentioned we, we did have a little bit of success uh, somewhat up there. It, it wasn't crazy in the first half. And uh, I guess you try to look at things that maybe you did against them or other teams that have done against them to have success, but right. not many teams have had success. Right, right. I mean, they're undefeated two seasons in a row. Right. Yeah, you're not going to find a whole game plan. you got to find a play here and there that you know that you like or things that you did well. You're not going to – I mean, yeah, like you said, outside of Mayfield, and that, that thing was just a <laughs> shootout both ways. I mean, I don't know. It was in the 50s, I think. So, no one – Hardly stops um, Owensboro Catholic, at least for the last two years. So it's tough. It's not easy. Yeah. There's nothing easy about it. But you just got to find there's teams that have successful plays, you know, and successful even quarters, maybe even halves. And just got to pick out what, what works and, and what we can do um, to try to give us the best chance to win. So you you played – and obviously in high school here, and then went on and played uh, four years in college. And you played against teams where you were the underdog, and, sure. and everybody knew it when you walked out on the field. We played Mayfield uh, back then. Uh, what do you? How do you prepare yourself as a player for a game like this? Just like you said, I mean, this is this is either win or go home. Uh, how do you prepare yourself as a player uh, for them for a team like this? You know, whoever it might be. Like when I was playing. Yeah, how would you prepare yourself? I don't. Um, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really think like that. I never thought that we were going to lose. Even you know, I don't know if you're just a dumb kid or whatever. You just. I try to think. That I need to work so hard that I think there's always a way to win, and that we're always going to win. What you do as a if coach. you're a coach and a player, yeah. I felt the same way. Like we got to find a way to work so hard that by the time it's Friday or even Monday, really, I need to be believing that we have a chance to win. Because if not, then what are we kind of doing? You know what I mean? So I don't know. I didn't really. I thought they would win it, and I thought there's always a chance to win it, and I thought there's somebody that's always won a game with a less chance than we have this week. There's a chance. There's been some team that's been a bigger underdog that's won the game. You know, just those thoughts, positive thoughts. I never thought we were going to lose a game. I thought we were really well coached. I thought the coaches were always going to put us in the best chance to win, and mm-hmm. I just thought it would be our night every night. One of the mantras that, that I use in, in coaching, and, and, and for that matter you can use it in life too, is that everything happens twice. In other words, if you imagine – that you're going to lose, you're going to yeah, you're going to lose. Sure. If you sure. imagine and see yourself winning, and, and you know somehow will it, right? <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, I think that's always a good good I thing 100% to take agree. in. Hundred percent agree. Take in the game. So, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about injuries and how they've affected uh, your team this year. And you know, when you have injuries, obviously it it, it hurts you as a team. But it also opens the door right. and some possibilities mm-hmm. and options, uh, opportunities for other kids. And some of some of the guys just off the top of my head, Trey Taylor. You know, this past week got some touches there, and because Mankey was out, and then you've had had Noah, uh, Noah Byford, who's come in this year and, mm-hmm. and played a lot of good minutes for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, Wes Lavelle's a, a freshman. Eli, uh, not I mean Eli, it's yeah. a daddy. <laughs> Eli Lavelle and, and made some good catches mm-hmm. and just I mean he's he's fearless sometimes yeah, out there. Oh, I mean yeah. he catches that ball in traffic and yeah. 
you know, I, there are others. Who are the others? And maybe yeah, I think Landon was one which we already talked about. Lived, took yeah. took uh, a huge opportunity last mm-hmm. week. Uh, Byford is another one who's bumped into a starting row. Who's did great with it. Um, with Byford coming in, Michael Porter's come into our next DB spot and got a lot of minutes in there. Eli has been great as a freshman on both sides of the ball. We've been playing him a lot on both sides of the ball and has really does a good job with all the minutes that he's got and has all year. Um, Juice Juice was a, a great surprise. Like you said, Trey Mikey, Taylor. Trey Juice, Taylor, Juice, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, you know, we're just kind of looking down the room like people are hurt. We're running out of running backs like at a crazy rate this year. And it happened. We've just been practicing different guys there, Eli there. Um, and then it finally got down to Trey this week. And we're like, he looks good in practice. Let's give him a shot at mm-hmm. it. And, man, he looked good on Friday. He, he looked really good running the ball, catching out of the backfield. We really liked what he gave us at F. And we're going to continue to keep him there and build off of it because we, we really, really need running backs, not just for now, but for the future. We're banged up at the running back spot and have been all yeah. year all year long so we've really been searching for somebody and i thought he stepped in and did a great job and uh we've got a couple of kids that have been out for a couple of weeks now uh uh, uh your lineman Mankey, michael uh, and michael counts, michael and, counts Mankey. And, and Mankey. Yeah. Uh, what's their Seth availability Hillary. status uh Mankey and um counts will be back so that, that's really big for us um both of them are really big for what we do um Mankey defensively and offensively, and Michael starts with us on the offensive line. And Jake Rich, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned him up front. Jake, Jake Rich had a really nice game last week, stepped in there for Michael, um, somebody that's a young player that's going to be really good for us. Um, got his opportunity last week and made the most of it. I should have mentioned him. So, But we'll be pretty well healthy-ish. we still got um, – a few guys that'll be out, but have been out a long time yeah. at this point. A, a, a couple more guys that came to mind there: uh, Gage Markham and Dakota Sosh, who yeah. who've put in some great minutes, right. and handled the ball at times. And, yeah, I mean, two, two young guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they're sophomore. No, uh, Gage is a sophomore. Dakota is a junior. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, they both they've both been playing all. They're not in because of circumstances necessarily. They've been in pretty well rotating all year long, um, at least defensively for Gage. And then he's got more touches offensively, though, uh, um, because of that. And then Dakota's played both both ways. He's kind of a rotation guy on defense and a mm-hmm. starter on offense. Both those two guys are kind of sleeper guys that, you, that just people don't really – probably think or talk a whole lot about but guys are really solid players both of them and uh the young blazina boy got in last yep, week yeah well he started and we started yeah. and you know he's a i don't know five seven 140 pound defensive <laughs> maybe. man and we, yeah maybe <laughs> he's quick as a cat though and he's tough as it gets and we thought that he had earned his opportunity we've kind of went down that d line too we've just got slim in a lot of positions and kind of trying some guys out josh marshall got in there at nose yeah maybe. i liked what he did um he at nose. Tackle. Yeah, and he's a big boy that can hold a double team down there. I liked what he did um, in the game, and he was another one that we probably should have mentioned for that, that got some time and made some plays on senior night. So, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of guys have been getting in, a lot of injuries, a lot of things, get a lot of guys' opportunities. But like you said, a lot of good things have come out of those opportunities. There had not been a whole lot of guys that we've had to put in and we're like, oh, man, he's hurting us. Really, really it's been pleasant surprises for the guys that have had to go in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it certainly doesn't help you this year uh, in the win and loss right, column. Right, uh, right it, correct. it does build your your depth and, and your your bench for the right. future, and and even I mean, creating starters out of correct. these kids because uh, you can't. There's no replacement for getting in there. No, you, there's you, not. You know, no matter how many times on the scout team right. you run it. Uh, so, uh, any are there any you know that of course, Ocath has got. I think maybe one of the best quarterbacks we've seen in a long time. He don't get a whole – I don't see he, where he gets a whole lot of love from the, the college recruiters. Maybe mm-hmm. he gets more than I see. But uh, that's Brady Atwell. And he, he, he got hurt, uh, I think, in the second quarter maybe when we played him. Yeah. Uh, and going for a loose ball and, and didn't finish. I think he was kind of gimpy coming into that yes. maybe anyway. So they took him out as a precaution. They brought him in. Uh, he's back healthy. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, where where are some things, I mean, without giving away your game plan, what are some things that you feel like you do that maybe uh, you can benefit from against these guys and, and use it to, to exploit some things? Anything in particular? <laughs> I know they're, they're pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just think you, like, 
I always say you just try to give them different looks um, at this period and, and just try to mix it up on them and hope that you can still play here and there. Um, Hit a big play somewhere and yeah, get a little I bit of momentum. Yeah, I think you got to um, – and offensively, you got, you got to be able to execute and make the plays that are there. And defensively, you got to be able to turn them over. That's really the two yeah. things. Um, Keep got, that ball away from you. Yeah, get the first down. Right. That's what I mean by execute the yeah. plays. If it's a three or four yard pass, we gotta be able to execute a three or four yard pass. You know, same with runs, if they're getting us light boxes. If it's just gains of three, it's good. We're keeping them off the field and keep the chains going. It's really important. Um, we're not gonna match them explosive play for explosive play. We gotta turn them over and be able to move the chains in however way we can. Hmm. Well, last time we were up there, it was it, it, the hurricane had come through the yeah. day before, yeah. washed us out on Friday night. We yeah. went up on Saturday. It was still pretty wet. Uh-huh. So the conditions were a little difficult. Uh, you know, this time, I think maybe there's a little bit more rain uh, later in the week. But uh, nothing like, like we had last time. Uh, so the uh, with fair conditions, it, will that change this uh, game? No, I don't think so. It was wet, but it was more of the – uh, you know the surface of running mm-hmm. and things. I don't think it affected the throw. I thought everyone threw. I thought Quinn played extremely well, and I thought both their two quarterbacks played extremely well. So I don't think it'll affect as far as. I don't think they'll they'll throw it. You know any different than they always throw it really well. Mm-hmm. So on both sides of the ball. So and you know, I'm sure you've gone back and you've watched that film where we played him over and over. Yeah. Uh, are there any things where you think gosh, one play right here or one play right there, maybe it changes some things? Oh, yeah, you got to get in the end zone. We got in the red zone three times yeah. in the first Right half. off the bat. Yeah, I mean, it was zero. It was six to zero going into the second quarter, and we had it inside the five yard line, you know, mm-hmm. with first down on a play. And then we get a penalty and get backed up first and 15 the next play. So, you know, if you, yes, a ton. We, we got into the red zone a bunch, and, and we didn't convert. And then they did. Um, we had an interception or that, that we should have probably came up with. There's always good plays, and we're not going to make every play. And I don't mm-hmm. want our kids thinking we have to make every single play. But there are definitely some things um, that, that if we can execute in the red zone, we're at least giving them a battle in the first half. Who knows how it goes from there. But if we're scoring when we're getting inside the red zone, mm-hmm. we're right in the game. Mm-hmm. Well, like you say, there uh, there's upsets every year in yeah, the playoffs. Uh, I, I remember we've been on the uh, on the good side, and we've been on the bad side. I remember one year where Fulton County beat us back back in I think Steve Pardue was the coach way back, mm-hmm. and uh, in Fulton County, you know, well that wasn't even, that wasn't in the playoffs actually. It was, it, but it knocked us out of the playoffs. That's back when it's tougher to get in the playoffs. Right. Cutting only one one or two teams. One mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, you just you, you do the best you can and uh, and uh, go down there and give it the old 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 country try, yeah, that's man. Right. That's, that's all right. you that's all you have. So we're gonna load up and go to uh, Ocath this Friday night. Uh, tickets up there. Uh, Cash at you? the gate, as far as we know. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Cash at the gate. It was last time, and we expect for it to be the same. And usually the playoffs are a couple of dollars more than than a normal uh, normal regular season game, and uh, I don't think any of your passes work, coaches' passes, not normally, uh, any th- teacher, you know, whatever. If you've got anything uh, like that, uh, they typically don't let you in with those. So, so kickoff 7 p.m. Uh, up at Owensboro. The the stadium's right there uh, off Fred uh, Frederica. Main Strip through uh, Owensboro. They play at uh, Kentucky Wesleyan there. Nice nice stadium, uh, mm-hmm. artificial turf. Uh, you know, we, we, we need our fans up there. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and we, we travel well, and we need them up there this week. Uh, for this uh, playoff game because we've got to we got to pull one off here if we're going to uh, advance. So uh, we'll see you up at uh, Owensboro Catholic uh, for a 7 p.m. kickoff Friday night as the Rockets open 2024 playoffs against the number one Aces.